what are your thoughts on the Rolex shortages? Yes, it's a very um, <sighs> dividing and contentious issue, isn't it? That's been talked yeah. about a lot. Now, if we are to believe that Rolex make a million watches a year, that's the figure that's touted out. That on the surface seems a lot of watches, but that's million watches across is across their entire range. And some right. of those they'll make more of than others. Right, of but course. if you divide that million by the watches across their entire range, and then you work out, I've tried to look at how many Rolex outlets there are, ADs there are in the world, don't know. But there's got to be quite a few in right. every country in the world. So those watches, when you divide them into the different yeah. quantities amongst all the ADs in the world, it's not surprising that they're only getting drip-fed drip a few watches at a time. Um, but then again, 10 years ago, you could walk into an AD and get a Rolex off the shelf. So at a discount. What, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, I know that when... They released, I think it was 2013 that they released the um, the Batman, I think, uh, that that became very, very successful and sold out very, very quickly. And when something sells out quickly, it creates a buzz, it creates a hype, it creates a shortage, yeah. it creates demand. But I don't know how that can account for all the other watches that, that they sell, that there's all of a sudden... I, I've only been collecting watches for two years, seriously. So I don't really know what happened before then um, to suddenly make Rolex so desirable that, that there's a shortage. They're making as many as they can make. Uh, why, why are they selling out? I don't know. Well, why could you not get one? Here's, here's my theory, mm -hmm. and now I'll, I'll let um, – I don't even think I've spoken to P. Ross about this, but this, this happened last – this past Wednesday. So we're, it's Sunday today. It just happened just a few days ago. I was talking to my wife, and I, I, I know some people are going to think this is weird or whatever, but it is what it is, people. Um, I'm trying to you know figure out how to make additional money for my family just because we're, we're trying to you know uh, acquire something, whatever. And um, so I'm like, all right, should I get another job? Should I do this? Should I do that? And and I'm always talking about Rolex, right? And doing things like that. So I was like, well, what if I do get on a waiting list? Because look, maybe I won't make the money right away. But if I do sell that piece, decide to sell it, I can make money with everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. So it took some convincing of my wife and she was like but this is not going to be for you right this is an investment and i was like yeah yeah for sure like well, well let me get on the waiting list i'm sure it's going to be hard but how hard could it be but let me let me try it so like an idiot i got dressed nice i had my blazer on some nice pants <laughs> some dressy shoes i wore my dear yeah. watch so there i go really nice i i uh, go in and <laughs> I made up this story that this watch was going to be for my dad and it was going to be a gift for him, you know, because he's been a great father. <laughs> and um, anyway. Oh, wow. But uh, yeah, so I go in there and uh, surprisingly, all the shelves were filled with watches. So I was like, what the hell? All right. So I immediately oh, asked, okay. right? So I immediately asked the, the ladies, it was very, not, I don't want to say it was very nice lady, but they did come up to me right away as soon as I walked in and say hey hello how can I help you and I said yeah hey I'm I'm, I'm inquiring about a, a Rolex Oyster Perpetual and I was looking for either the green dial the Tiffany which I know it's impossible to get or the yellow either one of those would do my dad showed some interest and perhaps if I could get that I'll get something else and something else and I'll keep buying from you guys you know I I, I definitely love the brand and I want to know about how I get on a waiting list because I think these watches are not available right she goes, oh, yeah, yeah, you, you, there is no waiting list. I'm sorry that we, we, it's just the waiting time for any watch. Any of our watches is, is more than maybe three to five years. And we cannot put you on a waiting list. And I said, are you serious? Wow. I said, well, what about all these watches right here? Are they, he's like, oh, those aren't, those are not working. They're just display watches. <laughs> they're, they're none of nothing is real. Yeah. I was like, so no, I can't get no date just, I can't get nothing no the no precedent or what is like nope sorry I, and i'm like so what you're telling me is i gotta go on the gray market and basically buy it mm -hmm. off of them and she goes 
Yeah, unfortunately, I'm sorry. I'm like, but wow. the prices are crazy. You know that, right? Like, I, it just doesn't make any sense. Mm. He goes, I know. I know they're expensive, mm-hmm. but uh, I don't know what to tell you. So right next to Rolex is an Omega. Plan B was going to go in there and perhaps put my da- name down for uh, Speedmaster, the 321 or the Snoopy. Yeah. So I say thank you to Rolex. And they, the, the lady was nice, but she was very short. She wanted me out of there. She didn't want me there. Wow. Mm. There was nobody else in the store. <laughs> like three, four employees, and I was the only one there. I was like, okay. So I, I walk out, and this is a very busy mall here in California, a very wealthy mall. Louis Vuitton and Christian Louis Vuitton and, and all kinds of watch brands, Vacheron, Patek, uh, Longa. Everybody's in that mall. So it's a, it's a big mall in California. So anyway, I go, all right, thank you. Cool. All right, well, very disappointed, very disappointed. So I walk out. I go to Omega and everything is full. They have all kinds of watches and Speedmaster and Seamaster and Constellation. And I'm like, oh, okay, that's refreshing to see, right? A guy comes up to me, really nice gentleman. And I told him what I was looking for. He's like, you know what, man? He's like, Speedmaster sold out the same day. He's like, there's a three-year waiting list for it right now. Ooh. My waiting list is full. I cannot put your name down. And I got to tell you this, even the people that left the deposit, I'm not even sure they could get the watch. I'm like, oh, my God. It's like, yeah, next which time. Which one was next... the store? Miguel, the Snoopy. Wow. The Snoopy. Yeah. The yeah. new one. The one with the, with the display case back where Snoopy kind of goes across the moon. Yeah. That's yeah. what they told me. And I was like, all right, well, what about the 321? I know they're limited uh, production just because they're, you know, I, I know that one watchmaker basically sees it all the way through. He's like, yeah, yeah. And just because of that, I, I cannot even put you on a waiting list for the 321 either. I was like, well, what <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> like all these, he's like, I know. Though you're basically asking about all the hot models. Like I, I can't get anything. So, I mean, I could have gotten a Seamaster or something like that, but I know the investability of that is not the same as these mm-hmm. other things. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, watches are not investments. Well, true for the most part. But some models clearly are investments. Investment. So what I was going to get to, and I've, I've spoken to a few, few uh, gray dealers, what is going on? And I believe it, it's there is no waiting list or wait list, I should say. It's all about the money that goes into the pocket of these Rolex AD guys and the connection that they have with maybe some gray market dealers or some other special customers. It's all business. It's all business. And yeah. it's sad because so- people... Yeah. So do great. you think do you think that if you would have walked in with a briefcase with sixty thousand dollars cash, they still would have been like, no? Maybe you know what what I was told by a gray market dealer was you need to buy a lot of watches, but it has to be their least desirable watches. So go in there mm-hmm. and maybe say that you're gonna buy a solid gold precedent. Or, or 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 something I, I don't know or or a few lady late you know date just to get you in the door and it's like it's it's unfortunate you need to buy the things that that people don't like or they don't sell very much in order to just kind of get in the door you know what i mean but it's and, weird and, i'm like not even a date just like a men's date just is like no nope, yeah we don't have it great what and, <laughs> what are you selling here you've got to have a lot of money to to be able to buy the less desirable watches before you may get offered the what you want. So there is a, an argument to just go to a, a, the used market or a grey dealer and buy the what you want at the outset. You might be paying more for it. That watch is still going to be worth that much 12 months later. You aren't going to make a fortune on it, but you're not going to lose on it. Yeah. You see what I mean? And you've but got I mean- the watch now rather than waiting three years buying watches that you don't necessarily want right. in the hope that you might then get offered the watch at retail, which may or may not happen. Yeah. It's crazy. But, but uh, so let me, so let me segue into the next question. Do you personally recommend people buy a hype piece, like a Batman, a Hulk, whatever through a gray mark market dealer because I think Hulks are going right now for like I think 20,000, 19, 20. But they retail for like nine or something like that. Yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. Are they worth ten thousand dollars more? I mean well I wouldn't advocate necessarily going to a, a gray dealer. My Rolexes one of them was new at retail and two of them 
were used from a, the used market, so not a grey dealer selling new. But I was at my one of my ADs in um, another city close by called Coventry, and um, having a chat there, uh, trying on various things, and then he said, "I've got something for you, Nigel," and he brought out the the Hulk and said, "There you go, try that on." And uh, mm. it was just after they'd been announced that they were discontinued. Mm. Um, I, I, I'd, I'd been keeping an eye on the market up until then, and they were going, I think, for about twelve thousand pounds. I think mm. this was fourteen thousand pounds. That's not bad. Two thousand and seventeen full set. It's now worth about sixteen, which is um, nine, nineteen thousand, just over nineteen thousand dollars. I believe for the 2007. So in a year, exactly a year, on paper, that that's potentially made two thousand pounds. That's crazy. Has it? Is it? Is it? When can? When is that going to stop going up? Um, it, it's a bit more desirable in the fact that you it's it's discontinued. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's crazy. What's it going to be worth next year? There's not that many of them available in the UK use market so um, and i've already been approached by two people to ask if i'd consider selling mine already so um <laughs> which i've said no <laughs> not yet i'm not destitute and on the streets yet so i'm keeping it <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but it, it, it's crazy yeah yeah so what what was so, that uh watch that you got at the ad new. well a bit of a story there i've got the um the new 2020 bluesy yeah, I think it's the one two six one three LB. Now, a friend of mine, and I love the watch community uh, on Instagram. I've made so many friends, yeah. most of them of which I will probably never meet. But the one guy lives not too far away from me, and he's got a um, uh, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sorry. I hope you can pause this when we end. He's got a relationship. That's the word. He's got a relationship <laughs> with his with his AD. Oh. He's bought some high-end pieces during the first lockdown. He was offered the bluesy because of the lockdown and the nature of his work. He couldn't afford it. Mm. So quite genuine, generously, he asked me if I would like to buy it. So he bought it. I paid for it. He bought it. He's kept his relationship with the AD. Awesome. I've got a, I've got a bluesy at, at retail. So that was very nice of him to offer to offer me that. So, uh, so I've, that, that's my my new Rolex that I managed to get at uh, at, um, at a retail price. And then a couple of months ago, I got the um, Deep Sea Sea Dweller yeah. JC. Mm -hmm. um, James Cameron, again, right? that was yeah, 2018 full set, and I paid oh, thirteen thousand two hundred pounds for that. So again, appro approaching twenty thousand dollars, I guess. Um, I know, I know. Uh, it's how much that will be worth in three, four, five years. Who knows? The bubble might burst. They might come down. It might go up. It might stay as it is. But I haven't bought them to flip or to sell. I've bought them because I enjoy them and I want to wear them. That's awesome. Um, Absolutely. Money in Money in the bank is no good at the moment. Interest rates are rubbish, aren't they? If you can spend some money, perhaps some pieces you get might appreciate a little bit. Perhaps some pieces might lose a little bit. But you're enjoying having something that you yeah. can wear and enjoy <clears throat> instead of it sitting in the bank, right. making making nothing. That's my view. Can't quite convince the wife that that's right, but that's my view. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was that was my view. So when I when I said I wanted to make quick money, I knew that. And I told her this, I said, this is going to be like winning the lottery. If I could go in there and I could get mm -hmm. a watch like in a few months, it's not going to happen. I think it's going to be later down the line, but it's an investment, right? So put your money in different little baskets. And I said, instead of, like you said, right, instead yeah. of having the money in the bank and it's just losing, yeah. we're losing money because of the interest rates. Let's diversify, yeah. right? And and it sounds funny because yeah. let's say diversify into Rolex, right? It sounds funny, but it's true. You know, I said, maybe mm -hmm. we can make, I could enjoy it right for a little bit and then we can make a little bit of money maybe uh yeah. and, and that's yeah. the reason she agreed because she was like yeah if it's gonna be for you how you say all your watches are investments or at least some of the bigger stuff 
but you're never going to sell because they're just yours. Yeah. And no, it's an, it's an absolute no. But if you're going to keep it for a little bit, but you need to sell it to yes. recoup the money and make some, then yeah, I, I, I see that, yeah. you know? So, but anyway, it yeah. just didn't pan yeah. out for me. So <laughs> mm, what a shame. What a shame. Yeah. I, yeah, I really yeah. don't see Rolex depreciating, especially when Rolex just came out and said that they're not going to increase production. They know right. there's a demand. They're like, we're not doing anything different we're, according to them. We're not producing any less or any more. We're just mm-hmm. doing us. But it's like, yes, but I mean, they they, they love the attention. You tell me what brand out there of they do. doesn't like the exclusivity, doesn't like to be the brand that everybody desires so much. Yeah. And the crazy thing to me is I've been watching these, these videos and t- people talk about like the most desirable watches and it's always AP, Patek and Rolex. And it's like, how can you even put Rolex in the same, you know, space as the other guys? It's, it yeah. just doesn't make yeah. sense to me, you know? No. Mm. 